You know, a funny thing happens when you actually study the people who are the best in the world in their field. One of the most common things you see on YouTube is videos on how to get motivated. But when you talk to the pros, they almost never mention the word motivation. And that's because if you wait to do the stuff you want to do that feels good to get to where you want to be in life, most days you're not actually going to end up doing anything. And so most pros have realized that no matter how I feel, every day I'm going to get up and I'm going to do the work. Now, in this video, I want to share one of the most powerful motivational habits that you can use until you get to that point of being a pro where you show up every day to live a better life and to work on improving your life. One lesson I've learned and certainly is true in my own life is that most change only comes from pain. You talk to people who are super, super fit, even a lot of bodybuilders, and you ask them, why did they get into bodybuilding? If they're really honest, a lot of them talk about being the fat kid who was bullied or the skinny guy who could never get a girlfriend. Like this archetypal story is almost like a Joseph Campbell hero's journey. It's so common. The people that are super fit driven by this pain and inadequacy. You see this a lot in business owners. People who either had deep self-esteem wounds as children that had to become successful or people who just were so unhappy in their day-to-day -day life. Like they weren't there with their kids, they hated their work, and they wanted to do something deeply impactful and deeply meaningful. Or you see people raised in deeply dysfunctional families, dysfunctional love relationships, dysfunctional friendships, and all they want is to not feel that pain again. All they want is to have a life where they can feel safe and content and connected to people so the commonality you see in all these scenarios is that these people are driven by their pain. They're driven to live a better life and become a better person through pain, and not because everything was fine and dandy and life was going great. So one exercise I would recommend is to basically find a way to remind yourself of your pain every single day. You know, in an ideal world, you could be so happy and so motivated and so driven by the love of your craft that you would get better and improve your life. But I don't think that's realistic, honestly, for most people. Now, I had this coaching client once, and what we did was we had her hang her old pair of jeans, which were really huge, outside her bedroom. She literally hung them on the wall outside her bedroom every night, so when she left her bedroom and when she went back in, she would see this massive pair of jeans reminding herself of who she did not want to become again. Throughout the weeks and the months, every single day, she saw those jeans and she'd be like, Oh, I just, I really don't want to go back there. I know how I felt. I hated feeling invisible. I hated feeling like garbage. I hated hating myself. And so that memento became a powerful driver of her behavior every single day. Now, if you're someone that's hating a certain domain of your life, try to find a powerful memento like that, that can help you remember the thing that you want to move away from the thing that drives you to want to get better and to not want to go back to that place. So maybe that memento for you is a picture of your old dumpy apartment complex that's used to live in. Maybe the picture or the reminder for you is some visceral reminder of your dysfunctional or broken family. And that's what's driving you to be a great family man or family woman, build a stable family for your kids. Maybe it's your bank balance. I took a picture once, my bank balance when it was $16, and I was like, I don't want this to happen again. And I kept it in my wallet, and every now and then, I would look at it over and over. So find a visceral reminder that gives you the hunger to want to get up and drive. So how do you really stay hungry forever? Now the reality is that at every level, there's gonna be different drivers. You know, at the base level, let's say you're just starting to improve your life. You could be dysfunctional in every level. Terrible health, terrible relationships, unhappy, depressed, can't sleep well, like financial problems, all of them could be dysfunctional. But after maybe six months or three years, maybe you've brought them all up to baseline. Maybe you're decently happy. You have enough income to live, so you're not stressing. Maybe you've gotten into your first relationship. And at this stage, what's gonna drive you is gonna be totally different than what used to drive you. So finding wherever you are, your visceral reminders for what's gonna drive you. Because at the beginning, it's gonna be your pain. But as time goes on and you get better, you're gonna be driven by different things and your pain may not be as present. 
So you're going to have to find something new that can drive you. But at the beginning, start with the pain because the pain is the most primal evolutionary reminder that I need to move away from this thing. I need to somehow fix something to get away from this pain. And that's what's going to give you the hunger to get up when you don't want to get up for another day and keep on fighting. So I hope that helps you guys.